Father, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. Father, we just thank you that you send your word and bring healing and deliverance to your people. Father, we thank you, Lord God, today, the teachers in us, the teachers among us. Lord, bring change into our life. Cause us to see truth that'll set us free. Father, right now, we just take authority over every lying spirit, every spirit of fear, every spirit of confusion. Father, we speak peace. We say this is holy ground. Those that are watching, Lord, we thank you that this is a ladder that your angels are able to ascend and descend on. We thank you for miracles, breakthroughs, transformational miracles today. And Father, we are so humble before you. And we say, Lord, your glory, your honor, your praise. Say from your heart to say, Jesus, Jesus. Minister, to me. minister to me. I want to hear your word. I want to know you. Lord, reveal your glory to me. And I thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis, the 8th chapter, verse 22. We've been talking about seed time and harvest. Everybody say seed time. Seed time. That means there's a time that you plant your seed, and then there's a time that you and I harvest. And so we've been talking about the blessing of God in our life, planting seed. And notice what it says here in Genesis, the 8th chapter, verse 22. How many are thankful for the blessing of the Lord? Amen. It says, while the earth remain, seed time and harvest in cold and heat in summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. In other words, there is a principle that God has placed in his word. And it's the principle of what you sow is what you're going to reap. Yes. What if you reap nothing? I sow nothing. What are you going to reap? Nothing. What if you sow sparingly as the word of God says, what are you going to reap? Sparingly. sparingly. But what if you sow bountifully? What are you going to reap? Bountifully. It is a principle. The world calls it karma. They say what, they'll say what goes around comes around. Good karma, bad karma. No, it's seed time and harvest. God said it like this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Yes. I mean, if you don't like the harvest or where you're living right now, you need to check the seeds that you've been planting over the past years or so. Yes. If you want to change your future, you need to change the seed that you're sowing right now. Everybody say, thank God for seed. Thank God for, thank seed. God for, thank God for grace. And so we started sharing with you that God gives us, a, uh, we give according to the blessing of the Lord. Amen. In other words, how many are thankful that we're different? Yes. You need to see yourself as different. You know, what comes to the world doesn't have to come to us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, a thousand will fall here, 10,000 will fall there. But how many are glad it doesn't have to come nigh us? Amen. I'm going to say we're different. We're, different. we're king's kids, glory to God. Amen. We're in the world, but not of the world, glory to God. Amen. You might go, Pastor, the world's going crazy. Well, how many know God's not going crazy? <laughs> how many know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever? And there's not a shadow of turning with our Lord. Right. How many like that? Yes. No matter what's going on around us, we can still surge and still be blessed. Yes. And it's the blessing of the Lord. That same blessing that was on Abraham and on Isaac is on us. Amen. You need to wake up in the morning and look at yourself and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The favor of God's on me. Amen. The anointing of the Lord's on me. Amen. I'm different. I'm special. Yes. I get preferential treatment. Yes. That's what the word blessing means, the favor of God. But then we said that we give according to the grace of God. Giving is a grace. Grace is a divine influence or God working in your heart and its reflection in the life. Paul told the church of Corinthians they needed to grow in the grace of giving. He said this one church was giving way above and beyond their ability to give because of the grace of God. How many are excited that God's grace is working in us? Amen. And we're seeing it now. People are getting stirred up to give. And it's the grace of God. The third thing we said is that God get, we give with a willing heart, a heart that is prompted by the Lord. How many have got prompted by the Lord? Amen. That's a good thing. Yes. Amen. That's how God moves on us. When the time came when they were building the tabernacle, Moses said, let's take an offering, a free willing offering of the people. One of the uh, translations says, people that were enthusiastically prompt to give, yes. prompt by the Spirit. Have you ever been prompted to do something? Yes. You know, and when you get prompted to do it, you need to do it quickly without hesitation. Yes. Because that's the Lord working in your spirit. Yes. How many have been talked out of prompting to give? You go, oh, I'll just give later. I'll do it another time. When the, when the spirit gets a moving, you got to just start moving. Amen. How many like that? Yes. Well, the third thing we started to share with you was this. And it will go here to 2 Chronicles, the 26th chapter, verse 5. When we give to the Lord, we give, we need to put God first. 
If you want the blessing of God in your life, it needs to be putting God first. The word says in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 33, a very familiar scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What are you supposed to eat? What am I supposed to be doing? Seeking the kingdom first, his righteousness. And then he says, and all these things will be added unto you. The context of what he's talking about is, the context is things we need. How many know throughout life there are things that we need, right? You need shelter, you need food. <laughs> he said, you put the Lord first and God will multiply. He will add those things to you. Amen. The problem is most people, they seek things instead of seeking him first. When you put God first in your life, that's when the blessing starts to take place. Matter of fact, one of the strongest rebukes that Jesus gave to people was when they came to him and they said, let me go bury my mother and father first. Let me first. And the Lord turned around and said, no, let the dead bury the dead. When the rich young ruler put himself first, the Lord said, you know, basically he was, he was kind of exempted from going further until he got the issue of putting God first. We need to put God first in every area of our life. Amen. God above all. Yes. Premio numero uno is the Italian. Say number one. Yes. That's it. No relationship, husbands, wives, kids. Some people wonder why they, they're, 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 their families get all out of whack. It's because you're not putting the Lord first. Yes. Joshua said it like this. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. Every decision you make, what does God say? Not what the crowd say, what the people say. What does God say? And when you put the Lord first, that opens the door for the blessing of God to come in your life. Notice what it says here. I want you to see a church family. This is King uh, Uzziah. It says, and God, he saw God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, everybody say, sought the Lord. Sought the Lord. What, what did God do? Well, just put it the opposite way. If he didn't seek the Lord first, it, something negative was going. There's a negative working. It said, as long as he sought the Lord, there was the blessing of prosperity. Notice what this word prosper is. I want you to see it. Slide number 26. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. And we love the word. Amen. Everybody saying God's first. Amen. God's first. The word prosper means to advance. As long as he was putting God first, he was advancing. I think when we think of the word prosperity, many times people get, get goofed up in their brain and they go, well, if I put this $10 into the offering or I do it now, uh, I'm expecting like a jackpot that supernaturally something's just going to fall on my head and I'm going to be rich beyond the wild, my wildest dreams. No, true biblical prosperity is you are moving forward, you are advancing. Yes. That's what prosperity is. You should be able to look at your life and go, am I moving forward or am I moving backwards? Yes. You should be able to take a snapshot of your marriage and go, is it better now than it was 10 years ago? You should look at your finance and go, is it better now? Are we advancing? Are we moving forward? Prosperity is you're moving forward. Sometimes it seems slow. Sometimes it's not as quick as we want it to happen, but how do you know there's a process in the learning that God's teaching us, and as we're going, things are starting to happen. How many can testify to that? Amen. So you just keep on doing what the Word says to do, and God is faithful to do what His Word says. When you seek the Lord, you will advance, you will succeed, you will pro be profitable, you will make progress. Yes. How many want to make some progress? Yes. You want to show, experience prosperity. How many want to rush, move forward, right? We're moving forward, push forward and up. Yeah. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Michael, I need to push forward and I need to push up. Yeah. I heard one preacher one time said, he said, I I'm, on the, I'm not on the bottom of the barrel. I'm underneath the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, He's like, I'm underneath the barrel. But how many know, no matter where you are in life, if you put the Lord first, yes. Yes. you'll start moving forward. Amen. Yeah. Things are going to start getting better. Everybody say getting better. Yeah. Everybody say getting better. Yeah. All right, let's go to the book of Haggai again real quickly. And I, I just, I, I touched on it a little bit and then we're going to move forward. I just want to go to the uh, second chapter. And we talked about how in the first chapter of the book of Haggai, it said, uh, let's go to the second chapter. We'll start with verse number 10 and then we'll read verse 15 and 19 through 19. We'll just start reading. But what was happening in the book of Haggai was that they were there and they were instructed to build the tabernacle, or build the temple, and they weren't doing it. 
But what were they doing is they were putting themselves first. They were putting their houses first. They were putting their desires first. So the prophet came and said, listen, you're, you're living in nice houses, but the house of the Lord is laid waste. And then he says, consider your ways. He said, think about what's going on in your life because you're putting yourself first. He says, you, you go to get some grain and there's not enough. You go to get wine and there's not enough. You have a, a bag that's got a hole in it and, and everything's going out. He said, this is what you need to do. You need to go up into the hills. You need to start get, building the foundation of the Lord. Start working. Put God first. And so the people heard this. But how many know it's not just hearing it, it's doing it. Yeah. They started to build the house of the Lord. They started to, to get sober-minded. And so notice what it says here in verse 10. It says, In the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of uh, day hours, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, He says, it goes on, verse 11. He says, He says, Thus says the Lord, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, verse, verse 11. Actually, let's, Carl, let's go, skip down to verse uh, uh, we'll just keep reading. We'll just keep reading. <laughs> You're good. Uh, let's just move on. Next verse. Because <laughs> it's, it's a whole different, whole different admonition here. Okay, next verse. It says, Then answered Haggai and said, So is the people, so is the nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is the work of their hands, and that which offers unclean. Verse 15. He says, he says, Now I pray, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the, in, the, in the temple of the Lord. He says, I want you to go back and think how it was before you started working on the tabernacle or the temple of the Lord, before a stone was laid. Verse number 16. He can sense those days were when one would came to a heap or wanted to get a, 20 measures, there was only but 10. In other words, there was never enough. He goes, you came to the press fat to draw 50 vessels of, of oil, but you, you, there, was, there was only 20 there. You didn't have enough. Look at verse number 17. He says, I, he goes, I, he goes there, was, there was no blessing there. He says, I smote you with blasting and with mildew. He says, everything was bad before you put the Lord first. He goes, the, the labor of your hands were hard. You, he goes, yet you didn't turn to me. Yet you didn't turn to me. Verse number 18. He goes, consider now this and upward. In other words, from the four and 20 day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, he said, consider this. Consider since you put the Lord first. Consider from that very moment that you put God first. Consider this. Verse number 19. He says, is the seed yet in the barn? Yes. In other words, there's more than enough. Is, the, is yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth? From this day will, from this day will I bless you. What is he saying? When they put the Lord first, from that moment, there was the blessing that was working in their life. Literally, the timeline is only about three months that this happened. In other words, prior to that, things were going bad. There was like a hole in their bag. But as soon as they put the Lord first, he said, within three months, things started to change. Everybody say, things are starting to change. Things are starting to change. Say, God is working right now. All right, let's look at this. Let's go to the book of Malachi. How many love the word of the Lord? Yes. We are excited for the word. Let's go to the third chapter. We love the word. Look at verse number eight of the third chapter. Hallelujah. Now, again, we're not under the law, right? We're not under the law. We understand that. But there's principles here that we need to appertain because it's, it's over in the New Testament. The tithe was putting God, it was the first fruits unto the Lord. It was, it was giving God your first and giving God your best. And really, the tithe is, is, is pretty much the most equal way that everybody can give. It's basically a percentage thing. So if you're making a million dollars and you give 100000 you're giving 10%. But if you're making a million dollars and you only give uh, 10000 and somebody here is making $50 and they give uh, $5, they're giving a greater percentage. And in God's eyes, it's like the widow woman, when she gave the two pennies, he said she gave more than everybody combined. Why? She gave 100%. So again, we're not legalistically under the tithe, but there are principles there. And you should set a percentage in your heart. Lord, what should I set aside for you? I remember when I was in Bible school, we didn't have anything. Literally had nothing. Uh, you know the old saying, didn't have two nickels to rub together. We didn't have, two, it seemed like that, you know. We didn't have nothing. And at the time, tithing just seemed like an insurmountable amount of money. And I remember this dear pastor said, listen, you need to give in faith and you need to give with your heart. And you need to give with joy is find a percentage in your heart. You can start giving. And as God increases, you start stepping it up, start increasing your giving. Well, we started out with 5 percent 
and we felt good about it. And then as God prospered us, we got up to 10%. And then when we got to 10%, you know, we just keep moving up. Because the principle works. The more you give, the more you get. Amen. We don't give to get. We give to be a blessing to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And Because that's what God said. So, but, but the principle here, it says, will a man rob God? He says, but he, he said, yet you say, where have we robbed you? And then God turns around and says, you've robbed me in your tithes and your offerings. Look at verse number and again, don't receive the legalism of this. I don't want you, but I want you to see the principle here. He goes, he says, because you're not putting me first, you're cursed with a curse. For you've robbed me, even this whole nation. Could you imagine that a whole nation of people just quit giving? Look at verse number 10. It says this. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Why? That there might be meat in my house. Why? why? Why do we give? So there's meat. People think, well, Pastor Michael, you know, the church will take care of itself. You know, God's plan is that God wants to bless you to help the missionaries, the churches. Amen. Right? I mean, we sit here and we're, we're looking at putting paint on the building. Uh, thank God for Sherman Williams that they did. That's awesome. But uh, some, we painted the building before. We didn't get free paint. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so th th there's things you got to do, right? We don't have like a denomination over us that goes, hey, we're just going to just give you a bunch of money. Uh, we're open to it. If anybody's out there just says, we want to give us a bunch of money. How many know some people get prideful about receiving? How many know you shouldn't be prideful about receiving? Because you'll say, well, pastor, I, some people are like, well, I got too much. I don't need it. Um, let me just bring you to Father God. Is Father God rich? Yes. Does he have more than enough? Yes. Does he welcome and joyfully receive our offerings? Yes. <laughs> Does God ever say to you, oh, stop, honey, just keep it? No, he says, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> Why? It opens doors for blessing. Amen. I had to learn this in, in my life because a lot of times you're like, uh, but no, I just like, if somebody says, here, pastor, I, I received the seed because God's working, God's doing things. Don't ever get prideful That's right. because really what you're going to do, you're going to cut off the grace for somebody to want to give to you. I mean, you're like, well, no, you can't treat me. I, I, know, I, I know. No, no, no. You got to loosen up. You're like, well, pastor, I'm blessed. Can you be more blessed? Yes. Well, I don't need any more. How many of the kingdom needs more? Yes. <laughs> See, stop being selfish about this stuff here. Right. He says, he said that there might be meat in our heart. How many are excited about what God is doing here in this church? This is amazing. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Now, Jordana, you know, we, we, we got, uh, she wants to get 20 chairs, but really we want to change the color of the chairs. I mean, we're just being honest with you. She's like, oh, I want to change the color. How I many know oh, change is good? You got to get rid of the old, we'll sell these ones. And so, you know, I, I think we should just get ch new chairs. Amen. All new chairs. They've got coffee stains on there and burrito marks on there. And we just, we just need new chairs for the kids. How many want new chairs? We, let's get that chair thing going here. <laughs> But isn't it amazing? It's absolutely amazing what God is doing. Now, again, if somebody's like, well, I don't want to give. Don't give. That's right. God's touching and stirring people's hearts. They're giving. That's right. When we look back over the year, this whole COVID thing, I, about four or five months ago, we gave a report and said that we, over, over, we paid the mortgage off on the building. And then there was like a, a other, it was almost over 50 some odd thousand dollars, 60 something thousand dollars. And I, I know some of you are sitting there going, well, I don't know how it's happening. I know how it's happening. It's God. Amen. Are you hearing me, church family? God's our source. God's our supply. It's coming. I, I, I have open channels. Lord, it can come from any source you want to bring it. Glory to God. Why? For the kingdom. What a blessing that during this time, we've, we've surged by the grace of God. People are giving. You have surged. People are just giving. And it's wonderful. Notice what he says. He said, he said, he says, bring your tithes. Bring your first fruits. Remember the Bible said in Proverbs, don't put God second or third. This is what I try to tell the young people. I try to tell my kids, I said, listen, put the Lord first. He said, bring all your tithes into the store that there might be meat in the house. And, and, he said, and this is the only time God says, put them to the test. That's right. That's right. He didn't say, put me to the test, lay hands on the sick and see if they recover. No. We know it's true. <laughs> right? That's right. But this is the only time God says, you, why? Because whether we like it or not, whether we realize it or not, 
Money is very spiritual. No, no, Pastor, it's not. No, no, it is. Jesus made the statement like this. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You can tell where your heart is by what you spend. You might look at me and say, boy, this old man loves pizza. He loves pizza. <laughs> I make no bones about it. I love pizza. All right. <laughs> but you can tell where your heart is. And Jesus, the offerings are very precious to the Lord. He watches it. He watches it. Jesus was watching the offering, how they were given. Do you think Jesus is still watching the offering, how we're given? Doesn't he want us to be giving with extreme joy, yes. not under compulsion, not grudgingly, not of necessity, but cheerfully giving to the Lord, yes. skipping our way to God loves that. He said he's, he will not do without a cheerful giver. Amen. If my wife came to me and said, well, I, I got to love you. You do. <laughs> How many like that? I got to love you. No, I don't want to hear I got to love you. I want her to be happy and smiling and look me in the eye and say, I love you and you are my hero and you're the most handsome man in the world and I'm, you're God's gift to me. How many old men need to hear that? <laughs> How many old ladies need to hear that? <laughs> All right. He said, put me to the test. Prove me. Prove me. Put me to the test. If I will not open you, the windows of heaven. What's the indication here? The windows of heaven are closed. He said, I'll open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out. How many believe this? That word blessing means to make you blessed, to be a source of blessing. I will pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. <laughs> I don't know about you, man. I'm excited about that. How many are excited about that? Everybody say room enough not to receive it. Put him to the test. Isn't he faithful? Hallelujah. Everybody say, I love the Lord. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another thing with giving, giving is so precious to the Lord, is you're going to see throughout the scriptures that God sets apart or sets aside things that belong to him. The tithe belonged to the Lord. In the New Testament, what you purpose and what you design and desire to give to the Lord is set apart to the Lord. Like with Ananias and Sapphira, you see it in the Old Testament as well. When Ananias and Sapphira, what was happening there, people were getting excited about giving. They were literally, the church, this church was just starting out. People were selling their houses and they were giving all the proceeds to the kingdom. I mean, they were just laying it at the, could you imagine that? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Just, just giving it to the Lord. So there was a couple in the church, Ananias and Sapphira. They saw people doing this and they wanted to do it them, themselves as well. They sold their property, but here's where they missed it. And, and I want you to see it here, because I want you to see it here, because I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't want you to just take my word for it. How many know taking Pastor Michael's word is not a good thing, right? You've got to take the word of the Lord. And especially when you're teaching these kind of things here, I don't want people to just go, well, Pastor Michael, you're just, uh, you know, you're, you're just talking here. I, I want you to see it. Let's go to Acts, the fifth chapter, verse number four. Actually, verse five, verse three, verse two. <laughs> Genesis one. <laughs> So they sold their property and they kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Look at verse number three. And Peter, now Peter, he said to Ananias, why hath Satan, notice this, filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Look at verse number three. It wasn't the, that they kept back part of the price. That wasn't the issue. He goes, while it remained, was it yours to own? In other words, you had it. And after it was sold, wasn't it in your power? In other words, they could have did whatever they wanted to do with it. 
He goes, why have you conceived this thing in your heart to lie, not to men, but to God? What were they doing? They were given the impression that they gave everything to the Lord. And what Peter was saying, you could have stood in front of the people and said, I just sold my property and I gave 50% to the Lord. That would have been pleasing to God. Right? But because they went and they pretended that they gave all that they said they were giving to the Lord, the Lord took offensive to it. He said, that belonged to me now. You stole from me. And you're telling all these people out here that you gave it to me and you didn't. Are you hearing that? God sets aside things that belong to him. The first fruit. Even in the Garden of Eden, right? Here they are. God says, all these trees you may freely eat. But this one tree (laughs) belongs to me. You can't eat of that tree. Because if you do, it opens a door for a negative thing. Death, right? What did they do? They had all this. It's just like, it's just, that's why the Bible in the Old Testament said, Old Testament was, again, I don't want you to get legalistic here, but I want you, grace to give should expand you beyond the tithe. Right? And we thank God it's happening here at this church. But in the Old Testament, the tithe belonged to the Lord. Uh, Matter of fact, it didn't say they, they received the tithe. They took the tithe. It belonged to the Lord. That tree belonged to God. God said, don't touch it. When they did, when they touched what belonged to God, it opened the door for what? For death. Everybody say for death. death. Let me see. Let me, but let me, let me just uh, give you some more here. God sets aside things. Let me see here, church family. My notes got moved. All right. Let's look at another one here, another illustration. Because I want you to just know... Listen, if you set aside and you say, this $5 belongs to the Lord, it belongs to the Lord. Don't you touch it. The best thing to do is not to say it. (laughs) Don't, don't, don't say it. You know what I mean? Just, just keep it to yourself. Right? But don't say it. Don't just go, I'm going to give 10% to the Lord. And then you don't. Just, just. God's, and if you do, get real, get real quick and repent. So, Lord, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I messed up there. I overcommitted. I'm very thankful for the grace of God. Amen. But there's something about the first fruit. When Abel gave the offering to the Lord, he gave it by faith. He gave God the first and he gave God the best. We didn't, he didn't give God the leftovers. Now, how many remember the story of Jericho? The children of Israel were going into the promised land. The first city that they were to take in the promised land was a city called Jericho. Do you all remember the story? Big walls, right? We all know it, (laughs) right? And, uh, but notice what God said to them about Jericho. Look at verse, uh, chapter, uh, Joshua, the sixth chapter. And uh, we'll look at verse number 17 through 19. Jericho was a first fruit city to the Lord. And he said, he said, the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she had the messengers that were sent there. Now, when you see that word accursed in the King James, it kind of makes you go, oh, that's just, this is an ugly city. The word accursed is ugly. Literally, that word, look at slide number 36. It doesn't mean a bad thing. The word accursed means devoted and dedicated. It means it's banned from you and it's devoted and dedicated to something special. It's dedicated to the Lord. Jericho was a city that was the first fruits. It was a type of the tithe. The first fruits. And he said, this belongs to me. And he said, look at verse, go back to the scripture. He said, it is accursed. Look at verse number 18. He said, He said, you shall keep yourself from the accursed things, the things that are devoted and and, and dedicated to God. He goes, lest you make yourself a curse when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel curse and trouble it. That's what this city was about. That's what it was. Jericho, it wasn't because the gold wasn't bad. All that gold, all that silver, all the treasures, all that spoil was belonging to the house of the Lord. (laughs) 
It was a first fruits offering to God. Now, some of you are like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> pray about it. It's, it's there. It's a first fruit offering. Yes. It belonged to the Lord. Yes. What did this one guy, Achan, do? He took of the accursed things. He touched what belonged to God. What did Ananias and Sapphira do? Again, I don't want, again, I want you to be careful. I don't want, because I know it's like, some of you are like, ah, I've done this. Oh, have mercy, Lord. I don't want you to get under condemnation. Okay, that's not my motivation here today. Okay, I'm, I'm, in spirit of love, I'm teaching. But the, these are truths. Amen. And if I tell you that the cars are out there and the street is, you know, they, they could hit you. I'm, I'm not preaching all cars are bad. I just want you to be careful. Right, we're learning something, right? What did Achan do? He took, he touched what belonged to God. The next day, they, he hid it. He, he put it under his, in his uh, tent. Nobody knew about it. The next day, Israel was going to fight a small little city. Nobody, they, Joshua said, just take a few people. We don't need to get everybody riled up for this little one. They went up there and they fled from the enemy. The blessing wasn't there. Are you hearing me, church family? Yes. And what did they need to do? They needed to get it right. <laughs> Are you hearing me, church family? Everybody say, don't touch, don't touch. what belongs to God. Belongs. Listen, you can sit here today and say, I don't want to give God nothing. That's okay. You know, that's actually better that's right. than to say it yeah. and not do it. That's right. Now, you won't be as blessed. But if you're like, I ain't getting tired. They're giving stuff. It's crazy, man. I don't know if I'm touching God's stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but these offerings are holy to the Lord. Amen. These are precious. Yes. These are precious to God. He looks at the offerings. These are wonderful things. He delights in the offerings. A matter of fact, in the, the book of Samuel, when Eli, the pro a prophet came to him and said, listen, your sons are making a mess in the tabernacle. They're sleeping with the ladies. They're doing things they shouldn't be doing. And he said, and also what they're doing, they're taking and touching the Lord's offerings. His two sons were taking the first portion. The people were saying, no, this belongs to God. And they're like, no, I want this part. And God said, because you didn't honor me, I will not honor you. Giving is the greatest, one of the great privileges and extension of our heart and our love to God that we can worship God with our giving. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's a holy thing unto the Lord. Yes. How many are excited about that? Yes. And how many have seen the blessing of God in their life? Yes. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Everybody say, the Lord is good. Say, the Lord is good. All right, let's just move on. I'll get another little thought before we go into communion. There's so much in this teaching thing here. Look at Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. So not only do we give and put God first, we kind of, this is kind of a, a similar thought, is when you're giving, there's going to be times God is going to um, lead you to give when you, the circumstances are not favorable in your giving. What, <laughs> yeah, there's been times, right? You're like, oh, Lord, man, this money would do much better for me. But the Lord leads you to do something. <laughs> He, there, are, there are times when God leads you and me to give in a hard season. Sometimes there's times, the Bible says, that uh, they that sow in tears. You know, <laughs> you're sowing, you're like, oh, Lord, this is hard, but I'm doing it unto you, Lord. I know you're leading me. Are you hearing me, church? There are times God leads you to do something. Like that, that woman, Elijah, came to her and he says, you know, uh, what are you doing? She says, well, I'm just going to make a little meal. And uh, I got all I got is a little oil. I'm going to make a cake. And then the prophet said, she goes, I'm going to eat it and die. And he said, well, here's what you need to do. Give it to me. Give me a little first. But that's, 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 the, uh, that's, that's the giving in the hard time. That's, that's, that's an offering. You're... You're feeling it. There was a time in the story of King David when uh, the devil moved on him. He said, I'm going to number Israel. And let me just give it to you so you can actually look. At, we won't go to it. I'm just going to tell you the story. You can look it up later. How many love the word? Amen. This is over in us. Uh, you can just read it for yourself. 2 Samuel 24, 
verse 18, that, that chapter, that'll help you. But what happened is David got prideful, and he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to number the children of Israel. And literally, Satan moved on him. And the, the Chronicles version of it says, Satan moved on David, and he got prideful, and he wanted to know, what's the number of people that we have? Even Joab, his captain, says, don't do it. Don't do it. You know God's with you. We're not putting our confidence and our trust in men, basically. Our confidence is in the Lord. Whether we got one person or a million people, doesn't matter. God's in control. And so he does it. And after he does it, uh, the Lord was upset with him. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring judgment. And he said, basically, there was like three things that he was going to do. Uh, David could choose. And David said, listen, I don't want to choose. Lord, you do what you're going to do. And all of a sudden, this judgment starts getting poured out on Israel. And it stopped at the place where this guy had a threshing field, uh, a, a, a threshing a place where he threshed the wheat. It was in Moriah, actually, it was the type of the cross. And, he, and he, that, that judgment stopped there. And because he, he was asking, well, what should I do? How do I get out? And he said, you go and you need to make an offering. He goes to this place where this guy is, and the guy sees King David coming, and he goes, what are you doing here? He says, I got an offer, I got an offer, an offering to the Lord. And the guy says, he said, I got to do it right here on your land. And the guy goes, well, here, you can do it. You can take it. And David turned to that man. He said, I will not offer to God something that doesn't cost me something. Yes. He said, I want to buy the land at full fair price. He made the guy, even though the guy wanted to give it to him, he said, no, it's got to cost me. I got to feel it. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yes. His, this is the greatest offering. His only begotten son is our God, a giver, a sacrificial yes. giver. Yes. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God, God, God gave his son. God planted his son, the most precious seed. Why? So he can reap a harvest of us. You know, and it's so beautiful to see it. And that, that sacrificial devotion is inside of you. That seed of devotion is inside of you. Yeah. When you get saved and you love the Lord, inside of you is a passion, a desire. People say, what's our mission? Our mission is the Great Commission. Yeah. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to, to, the, to the poor, to the blind, to the hurting. Tell them that Jesus saves, that there's, there's a God who loves them and cares for them. And there's hope. Are you guys hearing me, church family? Amen. So there are going to be times you're going to feel it. How many of you ever felt that giving where you're like, oh, I'm doing this and it's hard. Yeah. And not that it's hard. You still feel the light of the Lord, but it's, it's just, you're just, oh. it's hard. You feel it. Isaac sowed in hard ground. Notice what it says here. Let's just look at this quick, guys, then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. How many are excited here this morning? Amen. Ecclesiastes 11, chapter verse 20. He says, cast your bread upon the waters. Everybody say, cast your bread. Cast your bread. He goes, and what's going to happen? You're going to find it. <laughs> How many have found it after many days? <laughs> How many have found it after many days? Like, man, I, has the Lord ever failed you? No. That's one of the things the Lord always tells me. Sometimes, you know, we're human. We get a little, you know, you know. You know, we're like, oh, Lord, where's this road going, you know? And, uh, you know, uh, you know, we don't have like, a, like I said, we don't have like a whole thing. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm like, Lord, are, you know, is it going to be okay? And my wife's like, oh, it's going to be fine. My wife's got such supernatural faith. And sometimes I'm thinking about the future. Like, I don't know, man. What's, what's going to happen with us? So every once in a while, that thought will come in my head. And then the Lord reminds me, he says to me, he says, Michael, he must say at least once a week. He said, Michael, have I taken good care of you thus far? And I go, yeah? He goes, why is it going to be any different when you're older? Amen. Why, why is it going to be any different? Yeah. It's not going to be any different. Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. And, and I tell you, man, I tell you, I've seen the blessing of the Lord. I've seen his help. I've seen him. I, I, I tell you, church family, if we've, if we've seen it, you know, and you've seen it. Amen. He said, cast your bread on the water. And when, I, when I was growing up, my brothers, older brothers, they would... Uh, they were the, that was the big language. Does anybody remember that? Like, hey, you got any bread? Yeah. Yeah. Does, anybody, does anybody use that nowadays? Is anybody? It's Caleb, anybody? Our friend Nick's here today. Nick, you ever use that? You got any bread, man? Got any bread? <laughs> Ty, none of that? Hannah, none? You, you ever use that? You got any bread? Back when we were kids, man, that was a big deal. I mean, got any bread? Got any bread? <laughs> I remember that. It was like bread. Got any bread? Got any bread? 
And they, you know what they're talking about. They want to know if you had any money. He says, and you, he goes, if you cast your bread on the water, you'll find it after many. Now, what's he saying? If you cast your provision on the water, you're, you know what I mean? Bread's a source of provision. He says, you'll find it after many. Look at verse number, number three, uh, number two. How many love the word? He said, give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not the evil that shall be upon the earth. Verse number three. How many love the word? He says, he goes, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. If the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, it, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Verse, verse 4. Notice this. This is what I wanted you to see. He that observeth the wind, what is he going to not do? And he that regards the clouds... <laughs> is it possible when you're sowing, the wind's blowing right in your face? He said, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. In other words, we can't give according to the circumstance. Look at that scripture in the Amplified Church family. How many love the word? Amen. We love the word. And the cool thing about it, this is the cool thing. You could be sitting here right now and you're like, Pastor, I don't got anything to give but just this little bit. Sometimes we get, the devil dilutes our mind thinking that we need this big amount. If you got a seed... Don't despise your seed. Are you hearing me, church family? Don't go, well, I, all I got is a couple bucks, you know. What is that? No, 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 no. It's a seed. It's a start. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. It's, it's prideful for you to be sitting there going, well, it's all I got is a dollar. It's not even worth giving. That is a lie. That's right. That dollar, that quarter, that penny, that seed yeah. is precious to the Lord. And you need to see it as precious. You need to go, I got the golden ticket. I got the golden ticket. And when it's offering time, you need to go, yeah, baby, I'm giving, Pastor, yeah. <laughs> and you need, I'm telling you, you need to get excited about it. Yes. Yes. But if you're prideful, it will, it, you, you'll resist the grace that you need. You offer that. That widow woman, when she saw all these people dumping gold and silver, she probably was sitting in line going, I don't know, it's pretty embarrassing. They're all giving all this gold, all this money. And she's like, all I got is two pennies in my hand. And she kept getting closer and they kept dumping it in there. And she's like, all I got is two pennies. I'm sure she might have wanted to get out of the line and maybe go later. But you know what? She went there and she said, here, Lord. Yes. I just give it to you. Yes. And the Lord stopped the presses and he said, hey, everybody. He said, you know what? She gave more than everybody combined. Yes. Because they gave over their overflow. She, this, this dear woman gave everything she had. Yes. Is that precious seed? Yes. Don't despise it, church family. Especially young people I see here. Don't, don't despise it. This is the best time. Me and Andy talk about it all the time. Isn't it great we can teach our kids how to give, how to sow? Yes. <laughs> Learn this stuff when you're young. Yes. I got my sons now. They're just like, they're going crazy giving. I mean, they're, they're going blessing giving. <laughs> They're giving at levels I never gave at that time. And you know what? That's how it should be. <laughs> I don't get go, well, my kids, they're out doing me. I go, okay, Lord, I'm ready, Lord. I'm not through yet. Give me some more seed, Lord. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Notice this. Look at the Amplified. It says that. He said, he who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable. Will not so. I'm just waiting for just the right moment. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Look at that in the New Living Translation, my dear friend. We love the word. Amen. He who observes the, uh, observes the wind and waits. I'm sorry. Thank you. Jerry. If you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. <laughs> Look at the Message Bible. <laughs> How many love the word? Don't sit there watching the wind. Do your own work. Don't stare at the clouds. Get on with your life. People are just waiting for everything to be perfect. Do you realize we don't live in a perfect world? Listen, man, I would have loved to have been an Oompa Loompa, man. I'm telling you, who wouldn't have wanted to live in the chocolate factory when you were a kid? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I don't want to be a gusty goop getting caught in the chute. I mean, I want to swim in it. <laughs> Sip that chocolate. <laughs> this, this is the world we live in. It's not perfect. I mean, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't want to be. You're not perfect. We talked about that. We are growing church family. And the greatest thing we can do for each other is be honest with each other. Be transparent with each other. Forgiving, right? Because we need that. I don't know about you. I need grace every day. How many, how many need grace? And if we can just let our spiritual hair down, I bet you we'll get, we'll be like Samson. The anointing will come stronger. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. We can help each other, encourage each other. I think Christians get saved. They think, oh, I got to be perfect. Listen, you're not perfect. You're perfected in Christ. You are the righteousness of God. You, you are, your name's written down, but we're growing. And sometimes, bless God, as pastor, he said, I love when he amplifies the washing of water by the word. Thank God for the word that washes us. Yeah. One of pastor's favorite scriptures, I, it's stuck in my head now. It's a, it's a key, that's it. Yes. Amen. How cool it would be if we could just be honest and we can pray for one another, yeah. encourage one another, yeah. help one another yeah. without feeling we're looking down on somebody because we feel that they didn't get it. How many know you ain't got it yet either? Yeah. Right. Do you realize that? That you're not perfected yet either? <laughs> Listen, we're, none of us are sitting up on, that th on the hill throwing rocks at, you know, we live in glass houses. We're growing. Yes. Isn't that the truth? Yes. And I'm really glad there's mercy and grace for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Look at verse number five and six and we'll be done, guys. We love the word. As thou knowest not what the, the, the way of the Spirit how bones do grow in the womb of her that is even a child, even so thou knowest not the works of God maketh it. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, withhold not your hand. What is he saying? Live your whole day being a seed sower. For thou knowest not what, what's going what's to take, either this or that, whether they both shall be alike. What's God saying? In the morning, be ready. Yeah. Be ready to be a giver. Be, be, be ready to be a blesser. Be ready to be an encourager, right? Don't sit around waiting, just sit it out and say, okay, Lord, this is a day. I got a bag full of seeds. I got kindness to show, love to show, mercy to show. Lord, I'm ready to sow some seed. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Let's start to receive the, uh, the, the communion things here. Elements, guys. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. We are so excited. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 And it was neat. I'll just brag on Ty and Carly. Now, if the paint in the hallway, you guys don't like it, I'm going to tease Ty here. <laughs> they did a good job. Oh, yeah, awesome. Did, did Jordana send you a picture? Brother Ty, being a blessing, and Carly. It was a good thing. They came to church, they were painting, and gave me a good excuse to buy pizza. I was like, oh, thank you, Ty, for, for painting. I, I wanted pizza. <laughs> but, but you know what he said? He said, I want to sow my time. I want to sow it. Isn't that beautiful? And if he looks at it as such, I'm sowing. I just want to be a blessing. Guess what? It's going to come back to you. Oh, when you start doing things for the Lord, I'll tell you, that's precious. The Lord smiles on it. Now yeah, you hear me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Do you have something you want me to do? Just keep going. Look at 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, guys. We're so blessed. We're so honored. We're so excited. How many are grateful to be in the house of the Lord? Isn't it great? We got a good bunch here, don't we? Yes. You know, like Peter and John, after they were getting persecuted, they were happy to be able to go to their own company. How many know you need a crowd? You need people. Yes. Isn't that good? You need a church. You need a church family. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, and I think I need, oh, there it is. Thank you. He took bread. Verse number 24. 
And when he had given thanks, why do we give thanks for the bread? Because it's the life. It's, the, it's healing. The, Bible's, the Bible says healing is the children's bread. In the Old Testament, when they did the lamb, which is a type of Christ, they put the blood on the door, but they did something with the body. They were commanded to eat the, the flesh. How? With their shoes on, with their walking stick in their hand, because the Lord was getting them out. And the Word of God says in the book of Psalms, it says there wasn't one sick or feeble in all the land. How did that happen? These were slaves. They didn't have the best diet, the best living condition. I believe that night when they took the body and they took it in faith, there was a supernatural healing that took place. The Bible says, by his stripes, you and I are healed. We need to give thanks today and just say, Lord, I'm, I'm taking this body right now. And I don't care if you got a cold or something worse than that. You need to just take this in faith and give thanks. Just start thanking the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you that you're energizing me, that you're energizing my spirit, you're energizing my body right now. Father, you're bringing healing to every organ inside of me, every tissue inside of me. If there's a growth, Lord God, I believe that you're, it's being cursed right now. Jesus, you took it, so I don't have to take it. Uh, mental acuity right now, Father, we're just receiving it right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you are like, well, doesn't it just happen when you get old, you kind of lose it? No, 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 no. We get stronger. Hallelujah. We get stronger. Father, we're receiving strength right now. Right now, Lord God, we're renewing it. Some of you are like, well, Pastor, it's been so many years I've had this, but I'm here to tell you, listen, 2,000, more than 2,000 years ago, the stripes of Christ, the healing. I want you today, take it in faith, in thankfulness unto the Lord, and receive your strength, receive your healing right now. Let's do it together, church family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just receive it. I'll just start thanking the Lord. Healing power is working in me. Healing power is setting me free. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Healing power is working in me. Healing power is working in me. The glory of the Lord is risen on me. Just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Healing right now, Father. Right now, Father, limbs are being restored. Ears are being healed. Throats are being healed. Uh, uh, headaches are dissipating and going right now. Feet are being healed. Lord, completeness, Lord God. We're so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Right now, right now, blood is, all the balance in the blood is, is normalizing right now. Right now, we receive it, Lord. We receive it right now. Right now, we receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. With strength, strength is coming to God's people. Strength is coming to God's people. Strength is coming to God's people. We receive it now. We receive strength. Verse 25, it says, In the same manner also the Lord took the cup. And when he sup saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank God for the blood. What did the blood do? It separated us. The, the blood made a distinction and a difference when it was on the door, the death angel, the destructing angel, couldn't touch it. How many are grateful for the blood? Thank God, thank God. We put that blood over our lives, over our families, over our homes, over our, wherever we go, it's the, the blood of Christ. You're like, well, pastor, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the world. Listen, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in God's world. Amen. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we put that blood over our door. That devouring angel can't touch us. The Bible says, how do we overcome the enemy? He said, it's the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. How many are glad that we have a word of testimony? What The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord, let them say so. You know, the devil says, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to bring. So, 
<laughs> You're going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna... So I'm going to destroy your kids. You're not touching my kids. You're not touching my car. You're not touching my job. You're not touching me. Why? There's a blood barrier. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Michael, you're a little fanatical. No, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the kingdom. Amen. And I'm really glad you're in the kingdom. Amen. We're in the kingdom. We're in the kingdom. We're in the kingdom. There's something different. And there's something special about us. Yes. Hallelujah. Say this together with me. Say in the name of Jesus. I put this blood over my mind. I put this blood over my body. I put this blood over my job, over my finances, over my storehouse, over my investments. I put this blood over my home, over my kids, over my marriage, over my grandkids. I put the blood of Jesus. And I say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you cannot cross that bloodline because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Lord, I thank you for the blood. Now say this, I am clean. I am pure. I am made holy. I can draw an eye to God because of the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. I am pure. I am holy. I am set apart because of the blood. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for me. Say it from your heart. Thank you, Lord, for willingly shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says the life is in the blood. Lord, we know we have your life in us. But Lord, we believe today we're going to be quickened with a greater dose of life yes. as we take what's symbolized as your blood. Let's receive the life and the strength and the energy and the power of God. In Jesus' name.